saying, Groucho Marx, with his special guest, Jack Benny. Come on down, now to the river town, where you found your baby girl. Come on down, to the With Jack Benny visiting us, there's plenty of excitement in Blue Ribbon Town tonight. Ready and eager to greet their famous guests are Faye McKenzie, Bill Days, Leo Gorsi, Robert R. Brewster and his Blue Ribbon Blenders, yours truly, Ken Niles, and the leading citizen of Blue Ribbon Town, our happy host of hilarious hijinks, Groucho Marx. Gosh, Faye, this is certainly a red-letter day in Blue Ribbon Town with Jack Benny coming to visit us. Certainly is, Bill. Say, Groucho, you never did tell us what your visit to Jack Benny last Sunday was like. I had a wonderful time, and his rates weren't too high either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Marsh, you, you don't really mean that Jack Benny charged you. I don't know, Bill, but that was the first time I ever sat in a rocking chair with a meter on it. <laughs> but I must say, the dinner Jack prepared was very nice. He had a beautiful golden brown turkey on the table. Say, that was very generous of Jack. Yes, it was. A very unusual... Unusual turkey, too. What do you mean? It was the first turkey I ever ate made out of grape nut flakes. <laughs> was the stuffing good? Yes, it was. If you like more grape nut flakes. <laughs> well, did you meet Phil Harris? I think he's awfully cute. Yes, he is. Cute and ignorant. <laughs> you should have heard what he told me when I asked him if he liked the songs of Rimsky Korsakov. Why? What did he say? He thought they were a great team and wanted to know which one did the lyrics Rimsky or Korsakov. <laughs> And when I asked him about Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker Suite, he wanted to know what hotel I was in. <laughs> well, everybody knows it's the ambassador. <laughs> hey, Marcy! Hey, Marcy! Is our extinguished guest here yet? Well, well, everybody's entitled to one mistake, and here's Mother Nature's. Leo Gordon. Hey, Marcy, I just heard you talking about Phil Harris. You know, he's an old schoolmate of mine. Gee, I ain't seen Phil since we was in the fifth grade together. You ain't? No, just think. Two whole years have slipped by. <laughs> Say, Marcy, did you enjoy yourself at Jack Benny's house last Sunday? Yes, I did, Gorsi, but I'm always glad to be back here in Blue Ribbon Town with my own happy little family. You're right, Groucho. We are one happy little family. I like you so much, Gracio. And I like you, Faye. And I like you too, Mr. Mark. And I like you, Bill. <laughs> and Marcy, I like you likewise. And Gorsi, I like you lengthwise. <laughs> but really, kids, I am fond of you. Ah, my happy little family. I feel like taking you all in my arms. You, Bill, and you, Gorsi, and you, Faye. Hey, Bill, why don't you and Gorsi get out and make more room for Faye? <laughs> Jack Benny's main reason coming up here is to get a complete vacation. He's mentally worn out from doing his radio show for so long. I can understand that. Jack Benny's certainly been on the air a long time, hasn't he? He certainly has. Why, Benny's been on the air so long, he can remember when John wasn't even married to his first wife. <laughs> well, what do you want us to do? I don't want you to mention a single word about radio to Jack Benny or to do anything that will even remind him of radio. You see, Benny has radioitis. Oh, I get it. You mean he's allergic, huh? Gorsi, I bet you don't even know what allergic means. Hey, certainly I do. Then he's allergic to radio like I'm allergic to jail. Allergic to jail? I don't quite see the connection. Well, every time I'm in jail, I break out. <laughs> well, say, while Gorsi's breaking out of jail, why don't you break in the talk? I'd like to chance. I'll sing suddenly a string from the Paramount picture, Lady in the Dark. Why is my heart dancing? Imagine dancing. You look at me and suddenly it's free. Why do I keep sighing? Not sighing. I'm young and free, and suddenly it's free. I on a hilltop, love is calling. Someone should wish me happy calling. No more being lonely. I'm 
you to meet a man. There goes Niles again, bringing another pat pappy poet. Who is it this time, Niles? Well, this is Simon the Swami. He's a crystal gazer and a very jovial person. A jovial crystal gazer, eh? Yes. How does he strike you? I don't know how he strikes me, but I'd sure like to strike him. You would? Why? I've always wanted to strike a happy medium. <laughs> Silence! I'm Simon the Swami. My marvelous crystal can tell you if Mama is packing a pistol and whether the step you are planning to take will land on a pillow or poison a snake. But these days I work gazing carefully through our gun sites for errors. I find very few. And during my leisure, I comfortably peer into crystal clear glasses of blue ribbon beer. <laughs> <laughs> All over America, when people sit down for an hour or two of comfortable leisure, they always seem to call for a glass of mellow, delicious Pabst Blue Ribbon beer. Since 1844, we've brewed and sold some of the world's finest beers. And today, Pabst Blue Ribbon is the finest of all. Pabst, you know, is full flavor blended from 33 fine brews. And there's a whole century of brewing skill and knowledge in every delicious drop. Order it with confidence. Serve it with pride. For no matter where you go, there is no finer beer, no finer blend than Pabst Blue Ribbon. Well, I'm glad the kids all left. I want Jack Benny to feel like he's really going to get a rest from radio. Oh, there's Benny now pulling out in a taxi cab. I'll open the door for him. But driver, 35 cents. <laughs> Can't be over seven miles from here to the station. <laughs> well, all right. Oh, <laughs> hello, Groucho. Well, if it isn't Jack Benny, the last of the Waukegan. <laughs> come on, Jack. Come into my house. Relax and make yourself comfortable. Thanks. You're welcome. And, Jack, I want you to know that I told everybody in town that you're here for a rest and that they're not to mention anything about radio to you. Thanks again, Groucho. I appreciate that. You know, Groucho, to me, you're just a friend. I've never regarded you as a radio comedian. <laughs> Don't look now, Jack, but you just lost a friend <laughs> Well, now that you're here, you may as well start relaxing Just sit back in that easy chair there and I'll get you a little snack I prepared over there on the table Oh, good, I could eat a little something Here you are, a bowl of your favorite grape nut flakes <laughs> Well, gee, thanks, Groucho Wait a minute, you're supposed to pour cream over them, not pap blue ribbon beer <laughs> You take care of your sponsor, and I'll take care of mine. <laughs> hey, Groucho, this is swell. It's the first time in years I've been able to have two minutes to myself without someone talking shop. Jack, the word radio isn't ever going to be mentioned around here. Say, how about some music? I'll turn on the, uh, um... Yes? How'd you like to listen to the vacuum cleaner? <laughs> Maybe I can pick up Stardust. <laughs> no, I'd, uh, I'd rather just sit here and take it easy and talk about other things than, um... Uh... You know what. Suits me. Well, what would you like to talk about, Groucho? Oh, anything you'd like to talk about, Jack. Well, I'd like to talk about anything you'd like to talk about, Groucho. Well, that settles it. We'll talk about women. <laughs> Say, uh, how are you and Gladys Abisco? Uh, are you still uh, that way about each other? Gladys? Yeah. No, we've, uh, shall we say, fifth? <laughs> 
pardon me. I didn't mean to serve it. <laughs> well, that's too bad, Jack. Oh, by the way, Gladys was a waitress, wasn't she? Yeah. Guys, I'm I'm really broken up about it. You really liked her, eh, Jack? Yeah. I love her. See, she was cute. Used to get a lot of tips, too. <laughs> Well, that is true, love. Oh, well, that's enough about women. Say, there's a great trout stream near here, Jack. How about you and me doing a little fishing? No, no, I just want to relax. No fishing? No fishing. All right, then let's talk about women again. <laughs> Say, Jack, remember that little dance that we both went for when we were in Bodeville? Uh, what was her name again? Uh, oh, uh, you mean Lena Hackenbush? Yeah, little Lena. Remember little yeah, Lena Hackenbush? Yeah. I also remember that nasty trick you played just because she liked me better than you. What do you mean? Well, Lena always went for athletic men, and what she admired most about me was my flat, trim waistline. So you try to convince her that I wore a girdle. It's not true. I never said you wore a girdle. No, you never said it, but every time I was out alone with her, you'd sneak up from behind and snap me. <laughs> Well, enough for reminiscing, Jack. How about going for a little walk and really seeing Blue Ribbon Town? No, no, Groucho. I just want to sit here and relax. No walking? No walking. Well, back, back to, to women, women again. again. <laughs> Say, uh, by the way, Jack, I have a picture of you and Lena Hackenbush upstairs that was taken 20 years ago. Gosh, Groucho, 20 years ago. Would you get it for me? Gladly, Jack. Say, is that the one where Lena's running her fingers through my hair? That's the one. Gee, I'd love to see Lena again. And I bet you'd love to see her hair again. again. <laughs> well, I'll get, well, I'll get the picture and be right back. Well, Mr. Benny, Mr. Benny. Uh, yes, young man. Mr. Benny, I'm Bill Days, one of Mr. Marks's happy Blue Ribbon Town family. Glad to know you, kid. And, uh, what's on your mind? I sing. Well, that's nice. When Groucho comes down, you can sing for him. But I don't want to sing for Groucho. I want to sing for you, Mr. Benny. Sing for me? What for? Well, gosh, after you hear me, I know you're going to want me on your program. Look, kid, I came here to forget radio. Didn't Mr. Mark tell you not to bother me? Yes, but, gee, I couldn't help it. Being on your show gives a person so much prestige. Look, kid, I... You really think of that? <laughs> yes, I do. Gosh, Mr. Benny, you're just about the best there is in your field. Am I? Uh, would you uh, mind saying that a little louder, bud? Louder? Why? Uh, Fred Allen doesn't hear as good as he used to. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Older, Benny. You know. Yes, Mr. Benny. You're absolutely top. The greatest there has ever been. You just don't realize it. Oh, I do, too. <laughs> well, go ahead, kid. Sing. I don't mind. Go on. Smart kid. Got good taste, too, this kid. Really has. I used to be bewildered. Now I know. Oh, 
Well, do I get to be on your show, Mr. Benny? Well, gosh, kid, I don't know. You're a tenor. What's wrong with that? Don't you always have tenors? Kenny Baker, Dennis Day? Yes, I never fail to have trouble with them about money. And then, kid, with tenors, you always have mother trouble. So tenors, tenors just seem to have mothers. I, I can't imagine why. But, gee, don't you, don't you think having a mother is pretty true of most people? Yes, yes, I suppose so. But with tenors, somehow it's worse. Tenors have mothers who look like fathers. <laughs> Besides, I already have a contract with Dennis Day, an extremely fine tenor, so you can see nothing, absolutely nothing, could make me change my mind. But for such an opportunity, Mr. Benny, I'd... I'd even be willing to work for nothing. Please, kid, I'm not... Hmm? <laughs> I wonder if Dennis's mother would slug me if I broke his contract. <laughs> kid, you say you'd be willing to work for nothing? Well, practically, I'd be willing to accept $40 a week. $40 a week? Who do you think you are, Lawrence Tibbet? <laughs> Why, Dennis only gets thirty-five now. He thinks he gets one hundred and eighty-six thousand. You know. <laughs> on the other hand, if you'd be willing to work for hold uh... on there, Benny, a fine thing—a guest to my house trying to steal my tenor. There's nothing lower than a man who steal a tenor, unless it's a man who steal a base. <laughs> Except that the baseball season is just about to start. And have to give me that line about not talking shop. But Groucho, I didn't approach him. He approached me. That's right, Mr. Mark. I'm sorry, but I couldn't realize... I couldn't resist the opportunity to get on his show. Do you realize that being with Jack Benny automatically means being a great success? Oh, I don't know. Well, it's true. Name one person on Jack Benny's show who hasn't become a famous man. All right. Mary Livingston. <laughs> Now, run along, and let's not hear any more of this. Well, well, Jack Benny, I'm certainly glad to see you. Glad to see you, Ken Niles. Yes, indeed. Mr. Benny, uh, I've been wanting to talk to you for a long time. Yes, sir, you need an announcer like me on your show. You too, Niles. <laughs> oh, quiet, Groucho. I'm talking to a radio star. <laughs> You know, Jack, Don Wilson's not laughing like he used to. That booming quality, that wonderful chuckle, those real honest-to-goodness guffaws, he just doesn't have it anymore. He doesn't? No. Now, just try me out. Uh, I'll throw you a feed line for an old joke. A any old joke. The way he throws himself at the man is degrading. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, uh, say, Jack, uh, who's that lady I saw you with last night? Oh, well, all right. That was no lady, Ken. That was my wife. Isn't <laughs> that wonderful? That's marvelous, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it revolting? <laughs> well, what do you say, Mr. Benny? Am I better than Don Wilson? Well, I don't know. Wilson is fatter than you. He has more to laugh with. <laughs> well, I admit Don Wilson's a lot fatter than I am, but... Name one thing he can do that I can't do. Well, Wilson can take a shower without getting his feet wet. <laughs> Niles, you don't want to really leave me, do you? I thought we were one big happy family here. Yeah, but this is Jack Benny, the Jack Benny. So I'm Groucho Marx, the Groucho Marx. So what? That's what I say, so what? <laughs> so I know how you feel, son. Sometimes I even try to forget I'm Jack Benny. Yes, but it's such a thrill when he remembers. Oh, Mr. Benny, you there must be a joke in here for me someplace. <laughs> you want me to help you look, Jack? Yeah. Oh, Mr. Benny, you haven't given me a chance. You haven't heard me do a commercial. Just listen. Now, now will well, you get out of here and let... Benny and me go back to where we what we were discussing? Oh, women. Well, while you're on the subject of beautiful women, Groucho... I defy you to make a commercial out of that one. Uh, don't be too sure. Did you ever stop to think that a beautiful woman is a perfect blend of lovely attributes? Her smile, her grace, her lovely face, and so forth. There he goes with that magic word, blend. Ah, well, it is a magic word, Groucho, especially when it comes to beer. You see... Skillful blending of a number of different brews brings a smoothness and mellowness to beer that you just can't get any other way. Pabst, you know, is full flavor blended from no fewer than 33 fine brews. 
That's why a glass of Pabst is like an old friend. Its welcoming flavor is always the same, always delightful. Remember, there's a century of brewing skill in every delicious drop of Pabst Blue Ribbon. A 100-year tradition of hospitality in every sparkling glass. So, order it with confidence. Serve it with pride. For no matter where you go, there is no finer beer, no finer blend than Pat's Blue Ribbon. Well, there it is, Mr. Benny. Think it over. I'll be waiting for your answer. Toodle-doo. <laughs> Shall we dance? <laughs> fine, happy family I've got. That's the second trader who wants to desert me. There's a fine rest. Having away from radio. I had to come back for that line, you know. <laughs> Hello, Gratio. Hello, Faye. I'd like oh, to... Oh, you don't me... have to introduce him. Anybody'd know this is Jack Benny. Oh, I guess I am rather easy to recognize. Oh, yes. I've seen you in pictures. And I could tell it was you by your kind eyes, your, your strong, manly jaw, your big, brawny arms rippling with muscles. <laughs> Uh, would, uh, would you mind saying that a little softer, please? Softer? Why? My draft board is listening in. <laughs> oh, but Mr. Benny, you do have such a nice physique. Such a trim, fit waistline. Well, I... <laughs> Groucho Marsh, you snapped me again. <laughs> There's never a shortage of rubber around Benny. <laughs> you know, you're quite attractive, Miss Mackenzie. Oh, thanks, but don't call me Miss Mackenzie. You can call me Faisy. I can? Mm-hmm. Well, then you can call me Jaxie Poo. <laughs> and you can call me when my stomach returns to normal. About three months. <laughs> you know, Faisy, now that I've met you, I'm going to hate leaving Blue Ribbon Town. Too bad you don't live in Hollywood. We could see more of each other. Well, Jackson Poo, I'd love to live in Hollywood if I thought I could find a job there. Well, Faisy Poo, I'm, I'm a rather <laughs> important man in Hollywood. I could probably line up some sort of a position for you. Oh, Poo, how wonderful of <laughs> on your show. Pooh? Was that Pooh or Pew? P-O-O. P-O-O. Well, Miss Mackenzie, I did not offer you a job on my show. I came here to forget my show. Oh, but Jackie Pooh, how can you forget your show? A great comedian like you. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you're the grand old man of radio. <laughs> Uh, don't, uh, don't let my gray hair fool you. I'm just breaking it in for a silver fox. <laughs> hey, I'm really not old. It's just that I began my career so young, 30 years ago. Well, I was just a knee pan. Yes, and he looked awfully funny. A grown man of 25 running around a knee pan. <laughs> running around a knee pants, he poo. <laughs> Excuse me while I answer the phone. Jack, excuse me while I answer the phone. That never happens on my show. <laughs> Everything happens on our show. Hello? No, goodbye. Who was that, Groucho? It was the wrong number. That's never happened on any other show before either. <laughs> Hiya, Marty. Hiya, Mr. B. Say, I've been listening to your programs lots of times, and I think it's great. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed, Mr. G, but I don't care to discuss. There's any... one thing wrong, howsoever. <laughs> That guy, Phil Harris, detracts from the refinement and culture of the program. You really think so? There ain't a participle of a doubt. <laughs> and believe me, the lack of culture is a terrible place that should be visited on no man. You're absolutely right, Gossie Poo. <laughs> so please stop visiting me. Not only is Phil Harris ignorant, but he also has a terrible vocal theory. The guy knows nothing about nothing, especially grammar. Not only can't he conjugate conjugation, but he can't even subjunct subjunction. <laughs> Boy, what a soliloquy. <laughs> See, what you should do, Benny, is get someone to take Harris's place. Someone who's got class, 
refinement and education. In other words, me. <laughs> That's more than I had on the whole program. <laughs> I'll tell you, listening to you, Gorsi, Phil Harris sounds like Anthony Eden. <laughs> well, I know my speech ain't so hot, but my writing is very audible. <laughs> Leave one that, Benny. I'll see you later. Mm, some happy family I've got, Jack. Everybody has tried to leave me for your radio show. Yes, in fact, Rochester's was the only job that nobody wanted. Yeah, some happy family, all right. What loyalty? They don't even know the meaning of the word. Loyalty, faith. Semper Fidelis is discouraging. Oh, come, come, Groucho. Chin up. Carry on. No, Jack. Without the loyalty, without the faith of those one holds dear, life becomes nothing but a hollow mockery, a sham. A mere existence, hardly worth continuing. I wouldn't try so hard, Groucho. It's too late for the Academy Award. You know? <laughs> he just has scars that never felt a wound. Oh, I know you're hurt, Groucho, but after all... You're a good friend, Jack, but don't try to soften the blow. I'm disappointed in my so-called friend. Wanted to leave me to go with your show. It hurts, Jack. It hurts here. Now it hurts there, too. <laughs> there, there, Groucho. Don't take it so hard. I can't help it, Jack. There's only one thing left for me to do now. What's that? Mr. Benny, how about you all let me take Rochester's place? <laughs> Mr. Benny, if you want to hear how I deliver an important message on the show, just grab an earful of this. Neighbors' income taxes are vital to the support of our government. Right now, I'd like to let everybody in on a message I have here from Uncle Sam. He considers the prompt filing of income tax returns so important this year that he's asking everybody to find out what they owe him just as soon as possible. Don't wait until the March 15th deadline. Find out where you stand. You may owe more or less than you think. Get straightened out early. If you haven't received forms, write the office of your local collector of internal revenue immediately for forms and information. You can find out his address at your nearest bank or post office. If you need help with filing your returns, you can get it free of charge at the same office. But ask for it in time to avoid the rush. Remember, file early. It's more important this year than ever before. Well, Groucho... It's time for me to leave. I want to thank you for your hospitality. It was nice having you, Jack. Thanks for coming down. You must visit me again sometime. I'll be glad to. By the way, who's your guest next week? Everett Everett Horton. He's having trouble with his income tax, and he wants me to help him figure it out. Groucho, I didn't know you were good at that sort of thing. Do you really know how to fill out those income tax forms? Oh, yes. In fact, I helped Dorothy Lamore with her income tax last year, and you know how well her form is filled out. <laughs> well, good night, Groucho. Now, wait a minute, fellas. Get this very clever line they gave me to end the program with. Oh, this will be a scream. Wait till you hear this. Good night, Groucho. I'll be listening next week. I suppose, I suppose you think mine is any better, huh? Listen to the one they gave me. So long, Jack Benny. Thanks again. Good night, neighbors. The real lowdown on how to laugh off your income tax. Don't forget to listen to Groucho Marx telling Edward Everett Horton all about it next Saturday. All the rest of our regulars will be on hand, so join in the fun and come on down. This program is directed by Dick Mack and is brought to you by the Fast Brewing Company in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and Peoria, Illinois. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcast.